All right, if we could begin then, why don't you tell me what is the Party for Socialism and Liberation? Okay. Um, we are a nationwide party, a party primarily made up of activists and organizers. Um, from our perspective, real change doesn't come from the politicians. Real change comes from the people, from the organized movement of masses of people. Um, so we're very concerned with building the struggle. We've been very active in many movements. Um, you know, as my bio talks about, I was an anti-war organizer for many years. You know, we played a leading role in the Answer Coalition, which stands for Act Now to Stop War and End Racism. Um, I was a lead organizer in many of the major anti-war demonstrations that took place in Washington, D.C., um, starting in, you know, t we actually started in 2001, but, you know, these giant demonstrations, including the one of 500,000 people um, on January 18th, 2003. Um, we're very active on the, in the struggle for immigrant rights and the struggle against racist police brutality, um, for women's rights, for LGBT equality, um, so for a number of issues. So we're a party of very, very active people all over the country um, who are ultimately fighting for socialism, fighting for the things that working people need. So what made you decide to run for president? Well, like I said, um, we're primarily a party of activists and organizers, and we believe in building the movement, but when, you know, the elections come around, it's like the biggest propaganda apparatus in the history of the world, telling people to vote, 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 that, like, real change comes to the ballot box, basically telling people to demobilize, to go back inside and wait for the politicians to do it for them. Um, and so during that time, you know, well, we want to keep fighting for the things that working people want, so we can't sit on the sidelines during the elections. We have to get in there, too. Like, if that's where everyone's focused... If that's where all the media attention, all the people are looking to, then we're going to get in the, into that race as well. Um, so we got into this race, you know, with a 10-point program that we think speaks to the things that working people need. You know, we're talking about free housing, free, um, free education, free health care, affordable housing. You know, we're talking about making a job a constitutional right. We're talking about ending the wars, you know. So we think that it's one more way to fight for these things and to mobilize people and get them to, you know, um, the people who are struggling to get them to fight in their own communities for these things. In this election, we've heard a lot about socialism. Mm -hmm. And we hear people in the, who are critical of President Obama saying that he's a socialist. What are your thoughts about what socialism means and how that applies to President Obama? Yeah, well, very simply, for us, socialism means, you know, this is an extraordinarily wealthy country, and we believe that the wealth of this country was created by working people, and we believe that wealth should go to providing the things that working people need. We're talking about reorganizing society so that the rights of people, the needs of the people come first, and profit isn't concerned at all. You know, right now we have a society that's entirely organized to, to, for profit, based on what's profitable, you know, what, what's going to get greater and greater amounts of wealth into smaller and smaller uh, numbers of people, while the majority of us, the vast majority of working people in this country, are plunged into deeper and deeper misery. So we're against all that, you know, we're saying, let's reorganize society, let's have more equality, and let's... Um, you know, let's use all this tremendous wealth to fund the things that we need. Fund things like healthcare, housing, education, jobs. We believe all these things should be fundamental constitutional rights. Um, that whole question of whether or not Obama's a socialist, it's so ludicrous. You know, name one socialist thing Obama's done. Obama presided over the largest transfer of public funds into private hands in our nation's history. You know, he gave $700 billion of our money, of tax money, um, to the big banks, you know, to the big banks overnight. And, you know, gave it to them, no strings attached. They have yet to account for what they did with the money. Um, but, you know, that's the opposite of socialism. That's the opposite of what we're talking about and what a socialist would do, you know. We actually want to take that ill-gotten money, you know, the, these uh, massive profits that have been ripped out of people's hands, you know, forcing people out of their homes. We want to take that money from the banks and use that money to fund a jobs program, to use that money to build housing, and use that money to make sure that everyone can go to the doctor when they're sick. One of the things that your, your party is concerned about is militarism. Mm -hmm. How does that play out at the national level uh, as far as budgets and as far as priorities for the country? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really excellent point. And, you know, I think we, we believe that the U.S. government is, in fact, the biggest threat to peace in the world right now. Um, we're calling for the immediate end of all the wars, and we're calling for bringing all the troops home and closing down all of the bases. Um, the war in Afghanistan costs close to $400 million a day. I mean, think about what, what we could do with that money. Um, you know, I was an activist for Philadelphia Public Schools when I was a student in Philadelphia, and this year they announced that the uh, Philadelphia Public Schools have a budget shortfall of, I believe it was $278 million, and so they're being forced to privatize the school system is what they say. Um, so one day of the war in Afghanistan, one day of that $400 million could fix the crisis in Philadelphia and then some. Like, imagine what we could do with this tremendous amount of money. So the real spending for the Pentagon is something like $1 trillion, and we're saying shut it down, let's take that money, and instead of using it to slaughter our sisters and brothers abroad, you know, instead of using it to slaughter people in Afghanistan, people in Libya, people who just want to go to work, want to take care of their families, want the same things that we do, let's use that money to invest in our communities, to invest in, you know, in working people in the U.S. And finally, I want to ask you about ballot access. You're on the ballot in Florida. Mm -hmm. What other states are you on the ballot uh, in, and 
how hard was it to get on the ballot in those states? That's a great question. It's extremely hard to get on the ballot. You know, they say anybody can run for president until you actually try to do it and you realize how hard it is. Um, it's such an undemocratic set of laws and it varies from state to state, which doesn't make any sense. You know, for a federal office, there should be one set of rules, right? <laughs> like for one federal office for, you know, for people to qualify. We don't know of any other country in the world that operates like the U.S. where like for this one office, they have completely different qualifications from state to state. Um, and for, in some states, it's extremely difficult. And we know that that's, you know, that's intentional. They want to keep out opposing voices. They want to keep out anyone who's not one of the big corporate candidates. You know? Like, I believe Romney and Obama are spending like $2.5 billion this year. And though they're both wealthy individually, you don't get that kind of money without the big banks and the corporations, right? So we believe that the elections are fundamentally a sham, but we participate the, in them as a way of building the movement. Um, but when it comes to getting on the, on the ballot, you know, we want to show people we're serious, that we mean what we're doing. So we've been on the, we're on the ballot in 13 states. And we've done it with no money, <laughs> you know, like not, like not even not even millions, not even billions. Uh, we've done it with very little money, but with a great organization of volunteers who really believe in what we're doing. You know, we turned in something like 30,000 signatures to get on the ballot in New York City. Um, and it's really these are people who volunteered, not a single person was paid. You know, we were just doing this because we believe in it and because we believe in, you know, in a revolution and a new system um, and, you know, and getting our, our voice out through this election. Thanks. Thanks so much for speaking with me today. Thank you. I really enjoyed speaking with you. I'm just going to